In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint and how you can paint sunsets, landscapes, and things like that that don't suck. Now, scenes like this have been really, really common in the airbrush world for a really long time, but a lot of those guys were used to doing those in t-shirt world where you needed to have them done in five minutes. And I guess a whole lot of people just never really transferred out of that mode and those really ugly... Um, backgrounds and skies and clouds and stuff and for some reason there's a lot of really really bad stuff out there anyway guys let's roll into this tutorial i'm going to talk through the entire thing all right so i covered up uh two brightest spots with a magnet i used a penny and a dime as my shield and because you know i had a penny and a dime laying here anyway the first color we mixed up was yellow with some white added to it because pure yellow would be too vibrant. We don't want it that vibrant. You want it, uh, otherwise that white won't come off of it. So notice how streaky of a pattern I'm working in here. I'm just kind of flood filling the areas. Then I'm gonna add a tiny drop of violet. That violet added to that white is gonna make a tannish color there. See that, it's kind of an ugly color, but it's gonna be very useful. I'm going to go through here and work in very loose patterns. The pattern that I'm using is a wiggly um, figure eight uh, as well as a couple of just strokes side to side. But when you see my hand shaking like that, it's just on a figure eight motion. And, you know, I'm working it really fast and using just little, little bits of paint. Uh, the bottom edge is going to be a little bit different than the top but what you're trying to do is replicate a little bit of what you got going on in the clouds up top down in the water below I uh, didn't worry about anything where the trees and the forest in the background since you know what the picture looks like at the end you know what I'm doing there that whole section we left out is a section that doesn't uh, that's going to be very dark so so yeah you can see I'm starting to fill in and the only reason I'm filling it in is because I'm working with opaques right now. I don't have to necessarily worry about if I get full coverage underneath the darkest parts. I can stop. I just want it to blend a little bit. And I want spots that I'll leave um, the darker colors out on and that tannish color will show up underneath. That'll be my brighter spots. Use my thumb as a shield there. Now I've added just a little bit of burnt sienna with some white. Um, actually, I think I just added the burnt sienna direct to my mix and it gives me a slight more orange mix than that tan. And notice again how I work in that little little motion right there. See how shaky my hand is? Little figure eight motion going on. A little bit strokes to the side. And I'm going to make sure that I've got coverage in places that that orange color is going to be showing through. Remember again, as I was saying, you're going to want to cover, you're going to kind of replicate the reverse on the bottom of what you got going on up top. It doesn't have to be perfect because there's going to be a very dark shadow coming in from the trees, but not a lot because of the way the tree, the sun is going down over it. So the trees aren't really shadowing out very deep into the lake that we got over here. So as you can see, I start getting a grasp on the way I want my clouds to lay out. So notice how the left I've got them clouds sweeping up. And that's going to make those clouds kind of appear that they're closer to you than the ones in the distance. It's going to create your depth for you. So your direction, flow, and your and the colors you use will help influence some of that. Obviously, we do not want to go all the way up to our little covered up spot of our highlights. We want to leave that white, sh that yellow showing around there. And that's going to create that uh, glowish effect of the sun. I mostly want to freehand all my work, but I wanted to show you, you know, you, you need to. You can use a shield like a paper towel which will give you kind of a not harsh line up against it like a piece of paper, normal paper would um, 
as a shield when you want to create those lines and what that is that's kind of a wispy section where the clouds are dissipating and it's showing some of that different sky look in the background and the same thing we're moving along replicating now it's going to be important that if you use a reference and if you you know I'm showing you again with the paper towel that'll help you create some cloud-like textures you can use a torn scotch bright you can use a torn piece of paper towel a torn piece of paper to kind of get those shapes that you need but i personally i freehand all my stuff i put those in there because i wanted you to see when it comes to clouds i really freehand almost all of my stuff because it's actually easier and faster for me just to go ahead and free them in but it's important to understand you have to be very random you don't want any repeating patterns that's another reason i like to freehand my work is because i can be more random than using a stencil we've added a little bit of burnt umber we've gone to a burnt umber mix here uh, that's got a little bit of white into it for our next layer and that's creating some of those oranges for us if you watch me with this texture stencil here what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray through that texture stencil but I'm dragging it to the side why am I dragging it to the side because you want it to you want your water to be with the horizon so any line work you create you want it to create equal to the horizon your waves are always going to flow you know generally equal with the horizon so yes i wanted some texture in there just a little bit of something but i didn't want a whole lot in there notice i'm putting a little bit of a vignette on the sides um also coming down that's my shadow i was talking about and i'm bringing the umber over the shadow areas and all this color stacking that we're doing yeah, there are probably some other ways we could achieve this same effect but it's best to work that light to dark pattern um, and then watch everything start to appear. Plus you can kind of sketch out with your lighter colors where you want your darker colors while you're working on it so that you can have an idea of where they're gonna lay out. And I did that in several places throughout this painting where I laid my lighter color and I kind of just sketched around with it and was like, okay, I know I'm gonna put my darks there later. pay attention to the boo-boo on the left hand side I grabbed a airbrush that I had uh, some reducer sitting inside was cleaning it and it had some sepia left over in it so I've mixed up burnt umber and red violet that's it that's the two colors I have mixed in here together it creates a very warm tone it's darker than what the burnt umber by itself is but it's also a little bit warmer um, it's a fairly vibrant color but not extraordinarily vibrant and you can see I'm going in here and kind of repeating what I was doing before. I'm, I'm be working in that wiggly motion, creating those patterns. Also, there's going to be places here I'm showing you again. See, piece of torn scotch bright. You can use that to create patterns. But what you want to do with that, just like if you were working with, any, with fire or something like that, you want to use the stencil and come off with some freehand work. You don't want to rely on the stencil to do the whole job it will be much better convincing if you do some freehand work you really need that total randomness throughout that picture that you just create better freehand because you want a very loose pattern all of the motions we're working with none of these are we're not trying to go in here and get lines you're i'm spraying off the distance you know i'm a couple inches off my canvas I'm spraying, you know, I don't want any harsh lines, don't need any harsh lines. There's a few spots I'll go in there around in the water where I'll try to get those lines in. You'll see me here where I'm kind of creating little wave patterns with my airbrush. But I don't want a whole lot of waves going on because it's pretty calm. All I'm really trying to simulate is maybe just a little bit of there's some wind moving a very still lake or river and the wind is just moving that little bit of water in the back distance. Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to notice how I'm working that umber and red violet mix. I'm kind of working off of my um, sun there, and I'm creating the secondary um, forest back there. There's a spot behind the main set of trees, the main silhouette set of trees. Behind that, there's another set of trees that kind of peekaboos in the background, and I'm putting them in. But what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of a gap between the two of them, and I'm kind of be random with it. And see, now I'm using, remember what I was talking about drawing with your lighter colors? I'm drawing out where my first silhouette's going to be, it's where I can see it. But it's going to be a much darker color when I get to that first silhouette. And you see me working with some black beer wheat. Anybody who has watched me before already knows I use this stuff. It's something you get in a floral section. Really cheap. I'm doing a little bit of stippling work around here right now. And what that stippling is going to do is going to, those little waves that I was talking about, remember where the water is blowing it. And most of that's going to get hidden. So I ain't worried about getting over any overspray up into the darker sections. So... But I wanted it to kind of randomly pop out just a little bit. Of course, you saw me use the black beer wheat, which, of course, is working in the horizontal direction. Because, as I said, and I guess I'm repeating myself, but it is always in the horizontal direction in which your wave patterns are going to appear. The sunlight is going to pop off of them in a horizontal motion. And, of course, using a piece of paper there, which gives me a nice straight edge to create my horizon line. And I'm going to, of course, come back over it freehand. If you can't, you know, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, you know, you can continue to use a, a piece of paper or you could use something softer as a stencil or hold the piece now, of paper. Now, pay attention to when pleasure. I get over to the sun, I'm not really going to bring bright. that really, really dark in. Even though that's a forest there, I'm still not going to bring the really dark in directly underneath the sun, which is going to give us that little effect that the sun's kind of creating a haze there. And that way we won't have to come back and like add any white over the top or anything like that to create that effect. Um, just leaving it out instead of creating it in. You could, of course, you know, paint it in with whites, but then you'd have to deal with the blue shift a little bit. And that's just, you know, didn't really want to deal with it. And I didn't want to do any erasing or scratching. So that's the way I went about it. As you see, putting in just very rough shapes to simulate and appear to look like um you know a forest back there um actually i misspoke earlier and i said that this was the mix of red violet with uh black and it was actually that mix right there was red violet mixed with burnt umber we have not gotten into our darker mix yet and what I did there was take that red violet mixed with burnt umber and established that back forest line. And now I'm coming in with that same color and working a little vignette there. And of course put that really dark shadow in where the shadow's appearing um, both from the clouds and what is being left out of the, you know, forest, mountain, whatever you want to call it, background. And of course the sun is peeking over the top and running in there so that brightens out so that's why the middle is the way it is and continuing to work and add a little bit of cloud textures continuing to build um, you know just we don't want to get that dark mix in there around the um, sun because we want that sunlight that's how we keep that brightness in the middle is by keeping those dark and now we have them. finally gotten to that actual red violet and black mix that i was talking about i've reinforced that bottom section of the forest and i'm showing you again a little trick with the paper towel and of course i'm just going to do that go through that show you how you can do that what it'll look like and then once i've done that then i'm going to come in here and actually freehand all my stuff but you can do it you know continue along with a paper towel, little bitty things, you know, get creative. There are tons and tons of things that you can use to create effects in your artwork like that. Um, you know, experimenting and playing with it. Once again, we're staying off that uh, 
spot directly underneath the sun, which will cause it to look that the sun's peering over the forest and creating, you know, that little bit of overblown haze. And right now that forest is going to look a little bit too dark. Um, and that's okay. We've got some other darks to come in here with. So as you see me freehand out my thing, what I've done is come back and I've toned that mix down a little bit. It's a little bit, not quite as dark as the darkest mix I got in there. And I'm coming in and putting a vignette in and then I'm just throwing some random cloud textures and shapes in there. Notice as those darker clouds get in that that forest does not appear way too far out there anymore. Um, you know, the question wasn't that the forest was too dark. It was that the sky was still too bright. And so as we darken the sky, the very darkest parts will look not out of place, I guess, is the best way Now, I've mixed that. up some red violet, and it, this is very important. I'm going to freehand these in. Of course, you can use a shield to freehand these in and make little cattail ta tail leaf pieces and throw some grass up in there. It's very, very important that you do this with more than one color. So I'm going to start with this red violet mix, and I'm not going to make you watch every little section that I do. I'm going to freehand mine in, but if you need a shield, go ahead and get one. Then I'm going to just put a bunch of them in. Then I'm going to come back, use my black beard weed a little bit there at the bottom for grass. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep, I'm going to add a darker mix and I'm going to do another set. And I'm actually going to do three sets of this grass in three different colors. If you make it all the same color, then it's not going to have the same depth. And when you do those little silhouettes like that, it's important that you not go straight to putting black in for silhouettes. That is why your silhouettes look way out of place. You want to have a couple of different colors going on, and it's very, very rare that you would need any pure black. And then I cut out a little stencil of ducks and sprayed through that to put some little ducks in there. And we got one more important thing to do with this painting. As I looked at it, I realized I wasn't happy with the color. So what I did is mix straight transparent, clean my airbrush, put transparent paint in about 10 parts of transparent base to one part of transparent yellow and started covering it. And then I added a drop of orange and did another layer on it and came back and toned up some oranges a little bit further away from the yellows because I was not happy with my color. And there we go. All right, guys, we appreciate you coming by here today. And all my regular fans and followers, you know, I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. And the new people that are out here, once again, if you made it this far and you heard me in the beginning, but if you would, you know, throw the like button, hit the thumbs up. If you did not like the video, you can always throw the thumbs down. That's fine with me, too. And if you guys are interested in any of the equipment and stuff that I use, I will have a link down below in the comments uh, for my kit page so you can find out all the materials I work with. This particular painting was done on poster board with Createx Illustration Paints. And that's about all I got for you guys today. We appreciate you. Y'all have a good one. Bye.